set. <laughs> Not really, talk. Okay. <laughs> well, here we go. Here's a Chinook salmon head. This looks like a uh, female. Just looking at the shape of the snout is really short. And a male snout would be hooked and longer. And um, what we're going to collect here is a genetic sample. We collect that from the operculum, the gill protective flap on these fish. And then we're going to saw into the skull and extract the otolith. The otolith is a structure that's involved with balance. It's in the inner ear. It's uh, comprised of calcium. And what we do is we look at the chemistry of that structure and determine where the fish came from, where it was actually born. So we collect a little genetic sample, try to look for the tissue that's in the best shape. This looks pretty good. Okay. Collect a little one centimeter square. I'll put it in blotter paper to dry it out, keep it from rotting, basically. Jonathan, can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Jonathan Kaler. I'm a biologist with the Resource Conservation District here in Napa. You've been working for the RCD for almost, or over 10 years, just over 10 years. 15 years, in fact. 15 years, 15 sorry. 15 years, but who's counting? And, uh, <laughs> yep, been doing a lot of monitoring, and this is a big salmon year for us here in Napa, so we're excited to finally collect some, some data. These uh, carcasses give us a lot of information about, you know, the health of the fishery and, and what's going on in the watershed. So what we're looking for here is the otolith structure which is located just behind the, kind of below the brain. And what we do is we cut into the skull oh, nice. and we pull out these little, let me clean off my hand. They're in a little sack of fluid and it kind of looks like a a piece of oatmeal. It's about that size. You can tell the age of the fish by the size. Um, you can also look and the way this structure works is the center was formed when this fish was an egg or you know a very small fry in the in the water where it was born and then as the fish grows this structure grows outward just like concentric rings of a tree and it lays successive layers of calcium and it also lays uh, concentric layers of strontium and so strontium is one of these elements that occurs in different concentrations based on watershed so the Napa River would have its own unique sort of signature amount of strontium the Feather River, American River, Sacramento River and so you can look at the very center and you can determine sort of where that signature tells you that this fish was born and so what we do is we take that otolith put it in a vial Take the other otolith, let me grab the other one. If I can find it. There it is. Right there. You can see that this is a operation that you cannot do on a live fish. <laughs> it is a, that's why we need to find carcasses. It's nice that they donate their bodies to science. It is. And uh, you can really see that. Kind of looks like a feather. You can see there a ridge are. running down the middle of it. Yeah. So what we'll do is we work with some researchers from UC Davis, they'll cut it in half and then use a very sophisticated uh, instrument that measures the concentration of that strontium versus calcium ratio and tell us where the fish was born. 